Welcome to this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside, the podcast giving you advice, tips and tools for getting the most out of your research. I'm Adam Paulson and today I'll be talking to you about tissue processing for histology. Multiple steps are required when preparing a sample or multiple samples for histology. This episode will focus on one particular procedure that needs to take place between tissue fixation and the embedding and sectioning of paraffin blocks. You can't simply take fixed tissue and embed it, so we will focus on this in-between stage of conventional tissue processing for histology. The six steps of histology tissue processing. Step one, get your pencil out. Following fixation, the tissue sample is transferred to a tissue cassette. These cassettes, which come in various sizes, hold and protect the tissue while it undergoes processing. Once the embedding stage is reached, the cassette lid is snapped off and the main part of the cassette forms a base for the paraffin wax block. The cassettes can be labelled by hand with a pencil or your histology lab may have a cassette labelling machine. There are three main steps for tissue processing, dehydration, clearing and infiltration. Each step involves the diffusion of a solution into tissue and the dispersion of the previous solution in the series. Step two, all the fun of the carousel. In most modern institutes and labs, histology tissue processing is carried out in dedicated tissue processing machines. The older design of machine is a carousel which contains a cage where the tiny tissue cassettes are placed. This carousel has a number of glass beakers containing solvents and solutions that ensure the tissue is dehydrated and cleared, ready for paraffin wax embedding. The carousel vertically agitates the cage in each solution before moving it onto the next solution in the dehydration clearing method. The modern processes have a chamber in which the specimens are held and the different solutions are pumped in and out of the chamber. In general, the whole process takes around six hours and is usually set up to run overnight. Step three, dehydration. First, you've got to remove the water. The tissue needs to be hydrated to remove the water which is present either free or bound to the tissue. Paraffin wax is hydrophobic, therefore most of the water in the tissue must be removed before it can be infiltrated with wax. Removing the water is carried out by immersing tissue in a series of ethanol solutions of increasing concentrations until 100% water-free alcohol is reached. This series of increasing concentrations ensures that the water in the tissue is gradually replaced by alcohol and avoids excessive distortion of the tissue. Various components of the cell are also removed by this process. At the lower end of the ethanol concentrations, water-soluble proteins are removed, while towards the 100% ethanol step, certain lipids may be dissolved. Step 4. Tissue Clearing Although the tissue reaches the final stage of dehydration in 100% ethanol, it's not possible to proceed straight to wax embedding, as ethanol and wax don't mix. This is where tissue clearing comes in. The term clearing refers to the property of the solvents used. They have a relatively high refractive index, and when tissue is immersed in it, it becomes transparent and clear. Step 5. It's becoming clearer. The solvent used in this intermediate stage is usually xylene, The clearing agent needs to be miscible with both ethanol and paraffin wax. Following dehydration, the tissue is immersed in one to three different xylene immersions. In these stages, the ethanol is gradually replaced with xylene, and when the tissue is embedded, the xylene is replaced with molten paraffin wax. Shrinkage of tissue can occur at these final stages, as xylene also removes fat residues left in the samples. Step 6. Infiltration and blocking. Hooray, at last, a block. The final stages are called infiltration and blocking out. Infiltration is when the final xylene is replaced with molten wax, which infiltrates the tissue. Again, this is typically three different wax immersions to ensure that none of the clearing agent remains in the tissue. After the final infiltration, the tissue cassettes are transferred to an embedding station. This machine has reservoirs of molten wax, hot plates, and a cold plate for setting the tissue blocks. The infiltrated tissue is removed from the cassette and orientated within a suitably sized metal mould. The mould is filled with molten wax, the main part of the labelled cassette is placed on top and this is also filled with wax. The whole mould is transferred to the cold plate to finally set. So that ends the journey from tissue to wax block, which I guess is the start of another journey of sectioning, making slides and immunohistochemistry.
The corresponding online article includes a handy table that highlights the typical main stages of tissue processing for histology. So that's tissue processing for histology. Check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.